Welcome to Journey to Esquire, the podcast. I'm Jocelyn Hardrick, founder and president of Diversity Access Pipeline, Inc., the company behind this podcast and other great programs like Journey to Esquire Scholarship and Leadership Program, which provides $2,000 cash scholarships to third-year law students and internships to second-year law students, along with leadership training and mentors. And Journey to Esquire, the blog, which provides insightful articles to help navigate you through law school and beyond. Find out more on our website, www.journeytoesquire.com. Hello, I'm Luis. <laughs> um, I don't have much of a presentation, but I do want to tell you what the DAP program uh, meant to me. Um, when I applied for DAP, I was interested in access to the curriculum, modules, speakers, and mentors. I approached DAP as an opportunity for an introverted person like me to push out of my comfort zone and do more in law school than hope I never got cold called in class. (laughs) DAP gave me what I was seeking, opportunities to grow, but in a setting with people I could relate to. I remember I was so nervous before the group interview, I was literally, until the last minute, debating myself whether I would go or not. I would say, what does it matter if I go or not? It's not for a job, it's not for a huge sum of money. Blow it off, save yourself the stress. But I knew, I felt in my stomach, if I didn't go, I would feel like I failed myself. So I went, and I didn't have anything prepared for the presentation portion of the interview, so I winged it. Um, If you ask me, my presentation had to have been terrible. But still, I felt comfortable knowing that I went and I didn't stay at home thinking, what if? This was uh, the first opportunity that DAP, ga- that DAP gave me, and I'm very happy I took it. I was delighted to receive an email a week later inviting me to participate in the Diversity Access Pipeline pilot program. Uh, due to funding, I wasn't able to get a scholarship to go towards bar prep materials, but that wasn't ever what I wanted. I wanted things money couldn't buy, a mentor who I could trust and relate to, speakers who are insightful, accomplished, and who have faced and still face some of the challenges that that I have experienced thus far and have yet to see. I grew up in South Florida as the only child to Guatemalan immigrants. My mom made it to what would be an associate degree and my father didn't finish middle school. The first language I learned was Spanish and in school nobody could say my name right. (laughs) For a long time I didn't understand why some people would look at me funny or I didn't get why people thought tortillas and black beans were so funny to eat. (laughs) These are challenges that some people can't understand no matter how hard they may try, no matter how genuine they're being. I think sometimes you have to know struggle in order to understand struggle and that gave me comfort that I was around others who knew struggle just as I knew it. DAP gave me a lot of purpose and I enjoyed every module I participated in. I never left Tampa thinking to myself, wow, I really wasted my time tonight. (laughs) Each module was a new and unique opportunity for me to grow. We touched on leadership, mental wellness, federal clerkships, mentorship, community service, and more. After the module would end, instead of leaving Tampa tired, I felt energized and I felt alive. I'd drive home with the windows down, music up, cruising and filled with satisfaction. I will miss participating in DAP, so thank you Jocelyn and all those who helped put the program together. Thank you to the module speakers and presenters who dedicated their time to DAP. I do have one last thing to say. I almost didn't make it out here today, not because of the nerves I felt during the presentation at the interview, but because today is a sad day for me. My close friend Miguel passed away a year ago today in Orlando. As some of you may know, I have a huge interest in immigration law and my friend Miguel was a dreamer. He had received DACA status many years ago and wanted nothing more than to stay in this country. He had been here for over 15 years. He supported his mom and his little sister. He worked two jobs. I came uh, to law school to help people like him and even though ultimately he wasn't able to follow his dreams, I would like to speak into this room and into the universe that I'll follow my dreams for the both of us. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another great episode of Journey to Esquire, the podcast. Support, share, subscribe. 
And for more, visit www.journeytoesquire.com.